Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover the impact of tension curves on muscle growth and how this influences exercise selection for a training program. First, let's cover what exactly tension curves are. Tension curves essentially refer to the change in force demands throughout the range of motion of an exercise. These changes in force are a result of multiple different factors relating to the anatomical structure of each muscle and the biomechanics of the lift. Most exercises will have portions of the range of motion that are more difficult than others during the same lift. So what factors actually cause tension curves to exist? There are many different factors involved and we will now discuss the primary variables. First is the external moment arm. This refers to the distance between the fulcrum and the external load. In this case, the application of force comes from the muscle pulling on a joint, which means that the external moment arm is the distance between the moving joint and the load being lifted. A longer external moment arm makes the lift more difficult, while a shorter moment arm makes the lift easier. For example, let's use a dumbbell bicep curl to demonstrate this idea. At the start of the lift, the external moment arm is shorter because the dumbbell is almost directly below the elbow joint. As we lift the dumbbell up to parallel with the ground, the moment arm becomes longer because the dumbbell is further from the elbow relative to the pull of gravity. This will be the hardest portion of the lift because the moment arm is longest. And at the top of the lift, the moment arm is shortened once again, which makes the lift easier. The next factor influencing the tension curve of the exercise is the internal moment arm. This refers to the distance between the attachment side of the muscle and the joint. In this case, a longer internal moment arm actually makes the lift easier, while a shorter moment arm makes the lift more difficult. Going back to our bicep curl example, let's demonstrate this idea. At the start of the curl, the internal moment arm is shorter, which actually means the biceps are at a disadvantaged position. At the mid-range, the attachment site is further from the joint, which will make the lift easier. And at the end range, the internal moment arm is shorter once again, making the lift harder on the biceps. And the last primary variable influencing tension curves is the length tension relationship. To summarize this phenomenon briefly, the length tension relationship refers to the crossover between actin and myosin. These are the smallest individual components of a muscle which contribute to muscle contraction. The length of the muscle at any given point during a movement influences the amount of crossover between the actin and myosin filaments. There is an optimal muscle length which results in the maximum number of actin myosin cross bridges to form and therefore produce force. As we can see at very short and very long muscle lengths, there is less surface contact between the actin and myosin filaments, which limits how many myosin filaments are able to attach to the actin. However, at a moderate muscle length, there is optimal overlap between filaments, which allows the maximum surface area for cross bridges to form. This has an impact on the tension curves of an exercise. When the muscle is at a very long or short length, force production will be limited and therefore the lift will be harder. However, at a moderate length, force potential will be maximized and the lift will become easier. Now that we've covered what tension curves are and why they exist, let's explore what influence they have on muscle growth. Essentially, tension curves dictate how much stress a muscle experiences at different ranges in the lift. This may make certain portions of the exercise more or less stimulative for muscle growth. During the portions where more force is required to overcome the load, muscle stress will be greater and probably more hypertrophic. During portions where less force is required to overcome the load, muscle stress will be lower and probably less hypertrophic. Most exercises don't have a severe enough tension curve that makes the lift drastically harder and easier at different ranges, although some exercises certainly do. For these exercises, we can manipulate tension curves with different exercise variations to maximize the hypertrophic stimulus. Ideally, we want to provide constant tension to the target muscle throughout the entire range of motion. This will stress the muscle equally from the start to the end, requiring the muscle to produce force at all different lengths and angles. This is probably going to provide an overall more hypertrophic stimulus per set because more total work must be performed by the muscle fibers. There are many different ways to achieve a more constant tension for exercises which have a drastic tension curve. Some methods include changing the form of external load, adjusting technique, increasing or decreasing load, changing body position, using different attachments, or using bands and chains. The way that you manipulate an exercise is specific to that exercise and what muscle you want to target. Let's cover some example exercises and explore how we can manipulate them to provide a more constant tension on the target muscle. For the first example, let's use a dumbbell fly. The dumbbell fly is a fine exercise to isolate the chest, 
However, it involves a drastic tension curve from the start to end range. The dumbbell fly is hardest in the bottom position and easiest in the top position. This is because in the bottom range, the full force of gravity is pushing the dumbbells down, resulting in the pecs resisting the shoulders from horizontally extending behind the body. At the top position, there is almost no tension on the pecs at all because the arms are extended and there is no lateral force for the pecs to horizontally flex against. In this case, we could provide the pecs with a more favorable tension curve by switching the exercise to something like a cable fly. A cable fly will provide a much more constant tension curve from the start to end range. This is because the angle of resistance is not vertical like gravity, it comes from the angle of the cable. This will allow the pecs to be stressed at multiple different ranges and requires more total work with each repetition. Another exercise we can improve the tension curve of is the barbell row. This exercise has a fairly drastic tension curve where it is easiest at the bottom range when the arms are extended and hardest at the top range where the hands are closer to the body. While the resistance remains in the same line of pull for the entire exercise, this tension curve is a result of the anatomy and biomechanics of our pulling muscles. This is a natural occurrence for almost all horizontal and vertical pulls when the external load is constant. In this case, we can make the tension curve more constant by varying the external load during the lift. This can be achieved a number of ways, but a simple fix would be to implement an exercise like a landmine row instead of the barbell row. The landmine row naturally involves a heavier load at the bottom range and a lighter load at the top range. This is because the angle of the barbell is more horizontal to the ground at the bottom and more vertical at the top. This means that more force is required to initially lift the load, but force demands decrease as the load is brought closer to the body. This will provide a more constant tension curve and likely result in a better hypertrophic stimulus for the back muscles. So to summarize this topic, let's explore some practical recommendations. First, we should understand that different exercises have different tension curves. This may impact hypertrophy outcomes by how the stress is distributed on the muscle. Some exercises naturally have a reasonably constant tension curve, while others have a drastic difference at various portions of the lift. Therefore, it may be beneficial to manipulate some exercises to provide a more constant tension curve. This can be achieved by performing exercises which match the tension curve of the muscle group that you are trying to train. While there are other factors which should also be considered when selecting exercises, trainees should probably preference those with a more constant tension curve. This will likely result in greater muscle growth per set, as more total work is required with each repetition, and the muscle is also trained at various different angles. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.